Hi, my name is Heather Marsh, recording for Intro to Communications class at Berkshire Community College. So most of us have been quarantined for weeks now, and I'm sure many of us have, and this has many of us reflecting on our relationships to each other. I know it's caused me to do a lot of reflecting. Although we are all mostly physically apart, there are some experiences many of us are sharing. Either you are separated from important relationships, or you are closer than comfortable to members of your household. This is why I chose to talk about communication and close relationships in this video today. Whether you are surrounded by family at this time or by yourself in your home, we are all being forced to confront our close relationships without the distractions of our busy lives. You may be realizing that there are problems in our communication dynamics or experiencing gratitude for the strong foundation previously established. We may be stumbling over people in the house or aching for their presence. I've gotten a couple phone calls from friends that I haven't been close to in a while who were reflecting on past relationships, trying to heal from them because of the space quarantine has provided for this reflection. A few years ago, I was in the middle of a bad breakup between two friends, and I knew one was cheating on the other. When the friend that was being cheated on confronted me about it, I admitted what I knew. I wish I didn't because it wasn't my story to tell and my other friend had trusted me, but I felt panicked and like I was betraying both friends no matter what. During this quarantine, the friend who cheated confronted me about the pain I caused her by telling her partner what she was doing, and I felt ashamed, and I still do. I also feel panicked when I think about being in the middle of two friends again, and I'm grateful that that's not currently happening. I feel grateful that she had the courage to talk to me about what I did to hurt her, even though years have passed since this never happened. The quote I'm about to share is from Chapter 10 of Interplay by Adler from the section on communication and close relationships. Meaningful relationships aren't just nice to have. They are vital. Research shows that close relationships may be the single most important source of life satisfaction and emotional well-being across different ages and cultures. That's from page 292. This resonates with me, with me deeply. When I feel dissatisfied or exhausted from the pressure of work or school, I feel at ease if I have strong relationships I can look to for support or fun or reflection. When I have a disagreement with someone I'm close to, it's hard for me to concentrate on anything else until that conflict is over. I don't escape in another task, I just ruminate until we work it out. I'm quarantined with my toddler daughter, my 14-year-old brother, my 19-year-old sister that was displaced from her undergrad program, my 23-year-old sister that has been working from home, and my mom who usually runs a home daycare but is currently shut down because of COVID. This is the longest break she's ever had in 23 years. Money may be tight, but she's enjoying the time to relax. This time together has caused me to reflect on my family's patterns of communication and how it is different today than when I was growing up. Today, I can see that our household has a pluralistic conversation style which Adler defines as a household high in conversation orientation and low in conformity orientation. Adler states that communication in these families is open and unrestrained with all family members. Um, all family members' contrib contributions are evaluated on their own merits, from page 306. I feel deeply grateful for my home, the, home the home my mom provided for us all. I moved in with my mom when my daughter was four months old, and we've lived here for about a year and a half. I plan to finish my schooling in the home I grew up, and it feels very natural and normal to be doing so. Today, the household consists of mostly adults, and my mom has done a wonderful job of integrating us into her life <clears throat> as, we are, as we are and not as we were. We make decisions about the house together and break up bills together. I feel like I can talk about anything with my family, including really romantic relationships and future plans. It's the same house I grew up in, but the household feels totally different. When I feel like I need a career change, when I felt like I needed a career change and wanted to go back to school, I was able to talk openly about that with them. My mom and sister shared their ideas and experiences, even though, and even though it was my decision, um, I felt supported in whatever I was going to choose and continue to feel that way. I grew up in a household with, with both my mom and dad, and on reflection. Um, it was what Adler describes as a consensual family. 
Adler states that consensual families are high in both conversation and conformity orientation. Communications in these families reflect the tensions between the pressure to agree and preserve the hierarchy and an interest in open communication and exploration. That's from page 305 in Interplay. I definitely feel like I was able to speak my mind as a kid, but I knew it, was, it didn't necessarily mean my point of view held weight. My parents as a unit made all the decisions, which makes sense to me when raising a child, but <clears throat> I know I didn't want to bring myself into that situation as an adult. But my parents split up a few years ago when I wasn't living at home, and I feel like that made all the difference when I decided to move back. I knew it wasn't the household I grew up in because my dad had moved out and my mom was ready for a change. And she welcomed two of her children that had already left the house for years back into the house to something new. So thank you for listening today about my thoughts on close relationships and conversation styles from the readings at Interplay, and I hope you are all staying safe.